A second man has been arrested accused of gunning down rapper Mo3 on a Dallas highway. 28-year-old Devin Brown was indicted on a murder charge this week. Another man, 22-year-old Kwan Wright, was also indicted on the same charge earlier this year. Earl got a lot to do with this. Hey, rain. going to pop some bottles. It's bottle popping time. Half part of the time. Everybody around me told me not to trust him. So I ain't trust that little nigga. Wherever you from, you will get hated the most. You know, most rappers die in their own city, man. It's a fact. Now, you not finna come and try to say, I'm the nigga that shot you and think you finna walk away. I'm gonna get my leak back. Ooh, oh, see the nigga running down the street for a yeah. I done yeah. seen the was running from the pipe. Yeah. <laughs> if a nigga put you in the trunk, that just know that's on. Don't, don't panic. Don't panic if a nigga come put you in the trunk. Don't be kicking and all that shit. Just get in the trunk. Tonight, we have confirmed that rapper Boozy was shot in Dallas. That word coming from Mo 3's manager, Brandon Rainwater, but he didn't give us any more details. The brazen murder of rapper Mo 3 on the Dallas freeway last week. I appreciate all the guys in the Put that ass in the dirt, nigga. Damn. For sure, you did. Let me go. Let me go. Take a toast to that. You did. I'm good. You shot me in my hand, grabbed my back. Man, I'm good. What's up, Peso family? Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna be discussing the truth about Mo 3's death. A lot of people might think that just because those two guys were locked up that everything was solved, but that is not the case. And I'm going to be showing that to you today through all of the evidence that I've gathered up. And I understand that not all of you might know who Mo3 is. So just a quick background. He's a rapper from Dallas, Texas, as well as a singer that was heavily backed by Boosie Badass. He already had his own motion and his clout before he met Boosie, but that just pretty much elevated him even more. Now that is oversimplifying Mo 3's talent and who he was as a person, but I'm trying to keep this video short, so I apologize. Um, I will be sure to leave a link or something for somebody else's video that goes in deeper into who Mo 3 actually was and what he did for his community. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. Meet Brandon Rainwater. Mo3's manager at the time before Mo3's unfortunate passing. So you recently came out and you said that uh, Mo3 didn't die over the the anything with rap. No, Mo3 didn't die no about no rap shit. No, uh, Mo3 died from a jealous baby daddy. He claims that Mo3's death was a result of jealousy and not of rap beef. But as believable as that sounds, is it really the truth just because he said it? Let's dig a little deeper. So the best thing to do in the world, uh, and the easiest thing for rappers, for lame rappers or rappers that just, you know, want to get a buzz real quick, if uh, if a dude rapper, if a dude die across town, just make a diss record and act like you did it, and you'll get your screen will go up. And uh, and uh, that's the best thing to do. But Mo3 never died over no rap shit. Um, he died over jealous baby daddy. Now the rappers that Rainwater is referring to that are trying to gain clout off of Mo3's death are two other Dallas rappers, Trap Boy Freddy and Yellow Beezy. This is one of the videos that Trap Boy Freddy released, pretty much dissing Mo3 and saying that he did it. Tell him lab now. Heard they jumped up out the whip. He got ran down. Now true, anybody can record a music video and say they did it just to gain some clout, as Rainwater mentioned before. But this gets a little bit trickier when you see this video over here was Trap Boy Freddy actually uploaded minutes after Mo 3's incident. Man, whoever got the freeway blocked out need to get y'all together, dog. God, can't get on the freeway. Man, y'all got the freeway blocked off all the way on poke, dog. What the 
what they got going. I got the young boy with me too. Yeah. Okay, so Rainwater says that this has nothing to do with rap beef, but it just so happens that Trap Boy Freddy, one of his rap rivals, just so happens to be at the same location around the same time where he was murdered. Hmm. Okay. Let's take a quick look at the two suspects who were apprehended and charged for his murder. The two suspects here. Suspect number one is K1 Dontrell White, which honestly, I feel like the detectives had a field day catching him since he pretty much self snitched. This was the image that was released of Mo 3's killers on the highway before any suspects were arrested. Notice the gun. Now this was an image that K1 actually uploaded three nights before the incident occurred on the highway with a gun that looked pretty similar to the one on the first picture that I just showed, as well as what looks like a payout. Why might they be paying him? Maybe a hit? Huh? Hey, I don't know. Let me show you this music video. Hey, 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 hey. How about the wheel? Drago make a nigga flip. Call a ducky for the lift. Then hit up the spot. Then pay the mama for the drop. I pray the Lord I kill the op. Can't fuck with the guy. Now, with these pieces of evidence that he showed off to the public, it's safe to say that the cops caught the right guy. So now this is where I want to start getting deeper into the rabbit hole. Pay attention to this. Bear with me. This is a picture of K1, which might look innocent enough until you actually zoom in. He has on this GRC chain, which might not mean nothing at a glance, but this is where the pieces start linking together. Meet Jose Bodega, another Dallas rapper who is seen here wearing a GRC chain right next to K1. And if you know anything about Dallas rap, then you will know that Yella BZ and Mo3 were pretty much the biggest rivals over there. And here you see Jose Bodega with Yellow BZ in this picture. So K1 and Bodega must have some type of acquaintance if they have matching chains, right? And Bodega and Yella have been seen on many occasions together. They even have music videos out together. Yeah, I was getting hit by a thigh hole and hit a pothole. I need a new rim. Ticks. All spill up in Texas. Catch a couple to the rim up in Texas. Yeah, yeah. Get cut up in Texas. Big Ford and never lack and never have a conversation with badges. Now, I'm not making any allegations, but if Yellow Beezy did want to hire somebody, K1 wouldn't have been out of his reach. He could have even just told his homeboy Jose Bodega to set it up for him. We already saw K1 flaunting the bag three days before the incident. And if that was the money that they paid him to do the hit, it had to be somebody of power and money. Now remember these connections as we move on to the next suspect. Remember Rainwater said that Mo3 was killed because of a jealous baby daddy? Well, this is his face. Meet Devin Brown, the baby father of Josie Banks, which we will get to in a second. Rainwater says that the motive was mostly due to jealousy because Brown would see that his kids would look up more to Mo3 than to himself. Let a famous dude be fucking my baby mama. You know what I'm saying? And my, and my and my and my kids more excited about about the dude than their own daddy. Like shit, like <laughs> damn, like you know what I'm saying? And, and my son started looking up to that dude more than he look up to me. Like he got chains and money, and my baby mama taking trips. Oh hell no! Nah. I'm be laying in the bushes every night waiting for that motherfucker. Cause you ain't finna do me like that, yo. Anybody like that? So okay, so that sounds like a pretty believable story. Now, my main concern is on these trailer videos where you can see that the baby daddy actually has the GRC chain, which Jose Bodega and K1 also had. Now, the chain itself doesn't prove anything, but with the past information I've given you, you can see that there might be some loose connection there between the baby father and Yellow Beezy, which is Motri's rival in the rap game. The baby father was also actually a rapper and even send out a diss track to Mo3, where he described what he was going to do to Mo3 when he saw him. Can't turn water into wine, I don't do magic. But I bet I work that trap house to the last shift. He play with us, I guarantee it's going in tragic. Might get your low low or just catch his ass in trap. So we can all agree that there's a lot of self snitching going on. And once again, you can see him wearing the GRC chain in that video. But just because he has a chain on doesn't mean he's associated, right? Well, you can be the judge of that yourself. Now, just take a look at these pictures and you tell me that's the very first suspect that was arrested there on the back, K1 White. Now, this doesn't prove that Yellow Beezy has anything to do with it, but it shows that he has some type of connection with one of the killers, right? But what about the other one, the baby father? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you D Brown, or should I say Devin Brown, 
the second suspect caught in the case, which was the jealous baby father of Joyce Banks, the girl that Mo3 was seeing at the time. Also an acquaintance with Yella Beezy, Mo3's rival in the rap game. So why is Mo3's manager Rainwater saying that it has nothing to do with the rap beef? I saw uh, Mo3 didn't die of no rap shit. He died of, he, he, he died of a bit of baby, mom, baby, baby daddy. Pay attention to his response. So that is confirmed. Yeah, that's why that's why I feel like I that's what he feels like but he's going to every other platform saying the same thing hmm. but he also goes and mentions uh, the, the, the best thing you could do in life if you're a rapper and somebody die across town just rap about it, act like you did it you know you'll get a whole bunch of likes and views you know bunch of likes views on the federal investigation okay so in this man's book apparently admitting that you took part in the homicide openly is a big w because you know even if you have a rap career already made the clout inside of prison is much more valuable than the money that you're gonna be making out here huh honestly i wonder how mo3 made it that far with this guy behind him but we'll get back to this guy now let's go and check how josie banks feels mo3's girlfriend or the killer's baby mother prepare your eardrums so just some quick background this is josie banks the baby mother of the baby father that was the killer and some bloggers pretty much took it up upon themselves to pretty much say that she was behind moultrie's death and that she was actually the one who set him up with her baby father so whole time this whole time i'm asking rainwater clear my name clear my name we i'm getting into it back and forth with his ass because i'm trying to see why the f you ain't clear my name like y'all know what the f this Special ed kid looking ass nigga gonna tell me he don't want to clear my name because he wants to use the whole concept to promote three albums. What this nigga told me, tell me something. The nigga embarrassed come over to your house being weak over some pussy. Nigga being weak over some pussy. He rap about that shit in his songs. Now look at him now. Embarrassed, stretched out in the middle of the street because you leaving a bitch house trying to get some pussy. That's your homeboy? Told three, it don't matter about who the toughest. It, it's it's who win in the end. I don't like how you. I don't like the words. He. I said shit. We somehow we started talking about him dressing. He was just like nigga cheap. He he didn't want to buy no designer. I go buy designer. He only want to go buy no designer. He he want to go buy uh knockouts or something. Uh, I said well he had started buying designer. He had started dressing up shit. He was showing me what he was wearing and shit. He was dressing up. Oh that's cause he uh uh uh, uh that's that's cause we had a booster. Uh uh that's cause we had a booster. That's why he was dressing up in designer. So what? Why are you telling me y'all had a fucking booster? I didn't ask you that. I know for a fact that he paid them motherfucking bloggers to start saying that me and my sister got something to do with that shit again so he could promote this motherfucking album. But really, in reality, you might got something to do with it. You might got something to do with it. And you know I know, nigga. Like, quit playing with me. Don't you just Mo3 manager at the end of that nigga. Mo3 made you. Mo3 made you rich. Out for his talent. He didn't even need you. He could have did it on his own. He didn't need your snake ass. And you hyped up all the beef. Putting in his head. Oh, for publicity. Let's do this. Let's do that. You hyped up the beef instead of being a real nigga. Say, f*** that shit. Let's get this money. F*** all that beef shit. He had on your outfit when he died. Why the f*** did that matter? Somebody please tell me. Why does it matter that Mo3 had on Rainwater outfit when he got killed? What he say? And uh, I'ma make a movie about him too. Three was a selfish ass nigga. He didn't help Bubble. He didn't help Bubble with his funeral. He didn't help Roy Lee with his funeral. He didn't help Roy Lee and them family with nothing. He was a selfish ass nigga. And I'ma make a documentary about how he was selfish. And, and I'ma make a documentary about how the nigga was. He was a selfish ass nigga. This is a day after Mo Three died. He went out of town too. With uh, he took some. They get him apartments. He took her out of town to get her teeth done and da-da-da. Y'all telling me all the business. Did yeah, Motri ever talk down on Rainwater? Nope, he never talked down on Rainwater, but then he did tell me that he was a habitual fucking liar. Why would he kill his money maker? Because he can make money off of him being dead. I don't with my baby daddy. I ain't been with my baby daddy for three years. I ain't been with my baby daddy in three years. Having 
with him, was in an abusive relationship with my baby daddy. Don't f with him. Try again. Ask about it. Okay, so based off of what this girl is saying, maybe Rainwater's intentions are not as clear as they seem. But you know, just one person can say whatever they want, especially if they're defending themselves. But what if she's not the only one who brings to the public that Rainwater has ill intent? One thing that did stick out to me was when she mentioned that he would make more money off of Moltri's death than if he were to be alive. Let's see if that's true. Oh, I want to take it back real quick, man, because you mentioned that he took a two-year break. Yeah. Uh, it was there a reason that he took the break or he couldn't make music? He couldn't. It was hard for him to move. Like, everywhere he went, the police was look, looking at him. He kept going to jail for, they say he violated his bond. Like, it was just back and forth, back and forth, jail. Like, it was a terrible two years. Was he able to perform in Dallas? Um, he, no, because we never, he was able to perform but it wasn't for the price in, that we thought he was worth. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Because I think I remember uh, hearing that at one point, like, he was, like, banned from performing in Dallas. He wasn't banned, but I just wasn't taking them prices. Okay. I wasn't taking, I wasn't taking them prices. I was like, I know these people over here go for this price. They only got two songs. This man go sit on stage and perform for 30 minutes, word for word. So, you know, we knew our worth, so I wasn't never taking them prices. So what's going on with you guys at the time? Uh, we've taken label meetings and and uh, and uh, they still they just not giving us what we want. They not believing in Mo three. And uh, we going back and forth with these labels. We still trying to do it, but we wanted more though. We could have settled for that. We wanted more. We going. We, uh, we wanted more. Hmm, so what the baby mother was saying doesn't seem all that out of place. Mo3 apparently wasn't making that much money for Rainwater. Labels weren't offering what he thought was a fair price. Mo3 had a two year break and they weren't selling any shows. He says they weren't offering enough, but it could just be to save face. Now I'm going to play this clip for you and I want you to just pay attention to his body language, the way that he answers and how he tries to think of what to say, as well as that look of guilt at the end. How'd you get the news about everything? I was on the phone with him. You're on the phone with him. He called you, or or what happened? Uh, he had to wake up in the morning and do a movie premiere. Okay. And uh, you know, he called me. I called him that that morning by eleven o'clock. And then you know, that's how everything unfolded. And, uh, Was he like, "Yo, these dudes is following me," or? They like they shooting at me. Wow. All right. Well, okay. Yeah, he like they shooting at me. So. You know, it was a sad day, man. I... And just from an outside perspective, let's see what Charleston White has to say about this. Rainwater, man, I listen. You are a genius, but you are you messy, you lie a lot, you on the phone with gossiping like nigga. You will, nigga, you a gossiping messy. Yeah, yeah, he a dirty. Boy. And so once you find this out, so I've been with him for about a year or two. It normally takes you a year, at least two years, to really see how a motherfucker really is. You ain't my friend, nigga. You ain't my friend. I don't want no friend like you, nigga. If this what you call a friend, I don't want no friend like you, nigga. Everybody around me told me not to trust him. So I ain't trust that little nigga. Earl got a lot to do with this. Earl got a lot to do with this. Ad rain. What you talking about? And I ain't even from Dallas. I ain't even from Dallas. I'm from Fort Worth. I, don't, I know all this. How I know all this? I didn't know Mo 3 before he died. Rain come over here fucking with me. Telling me the truth about all this. How I get all this information? Tell him about the double cross, nigga, with Mo. Nobody knew what the car was, but you went to Mo. You said, nigga, I went and told him and leave Earl alone. He was going up there f***ing with Earl. Him and Earl stayed in the same apartment. Earl, don't, come on, Rain. It's so much I know about the Boosie and Yo Gotti situation with Mo3. Now nah, that nigga ain't supposed to be not homie. But if you go lie on me and you want me to hold the truth that you done told me, nigga, the truth shall set me free. 
So it's clear that it's not just one person that feels like this about Rainwater. And post Mo 3's death, Yellow Beezy has been saying that him and Mo 3 never really had beef. This did get along. We never had no problem. You never had no problem. Mm -mm. Okay. Because uh, I, okay. This is, uh, you barely acknowledged it. You barely ever had anything to say about it, but there was a lot of tension, at least on records or people talking online between you and Mo 3. Now that he's passed, how do you view all that? Like, do you, do you, are you able to admit that he was, you know, an important factor in the city for that period of time, or is it still just, I don't, I, you can't say anything? Nah, I don't, I ain't never had no tears from nobody. Right. That was it. Right. Yeah, I ain't never been no tears from nobody. Look at this guy. I, just, I saw you give Vlad an answer like that at one point, too. I'm, I'm serious. And apparently, from what Rainwater's trying to show us, Yellow doesn't really mess with him, but I'm not really buying this. If somebody was really out to get you, you wouldn't even see them coming. And if they would have really wanted to teach you a lesson and hit you, they wouldn't have cared of the place asking you to go outside like if this is a middle school. This looks like another one of his publicity stunts for Mo 3's album, which he will be reaping the benefits of. Look at him talking to them boy telling, telling the on King Day, telling. Club has let's go outside and fight like i said we're at the airport look we're gonna meet up let's go and I'm, say it's I'm, outside i'm at this police on my mama if we say meet up you is not gonna take me back you is not gonna meet up put on my chair on my chair like, you say what on my chair say let with this i will leave the decision up to you let me know down in the comment section what you think as well as if there's any details that you feel like i left out i tried not to go too deep into the background story because this video is already 20 minutes and i wanted to keep it relatively short but let me know if you guys like this type of content and leave some feedback as well as any recommendations you may have but aside from that until next time peso family peace and blessings to all of you